It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. I just love it. Behind the wheel of a classic car. It's fast. It's a race. And a goal to scar Britain for antiques. This could be tricky. The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. High five. They'll be worthy winners. Mind-blowing. And valiant <laughs> losers. Could have been worse. Will it be the high road to glory? Oh! Or the slow road to disaster? Oh, oh no. This <laughs> is the Antiques Road Trip. Welcome to the frozen north. <laughs> Look at the snow. Look at this. No, it's not Christmas, but our intrepid experts, Rue Irvin and James Braxton, are still having to brave the elements to go shopping for antiques goodies. They're going out now, and they may be some time. <laughs> Why are there no snowmen? If it was ours, we'd be making snowmen all over the place. I know. They're probably pleased to be released from their homes. Yes, they can go out and buy their rations again. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least they've brought their own provisions. Now, what have you got? Have I've you brought you some... Some stuffed tomatoes some, for these? No, smoky stuffed peppers with paprika and chilli flakes. And Very they've got good. a kick. Very good. Mm. Clears the channels, doesn't it? <laughs> it's not the channels you want to worry about. It's only the second time out for Dila Arusha. That's rude to you and me. She's a big fan of small, shiny things and is passionate about glass. Guess what Ruth found? See what I mean? Auctioneer and bon vivant James <sighs> is a veteran tripper with a soft spot for hefty items. Loves a picture too. Now, I'd never underestimate the power of cute. Although they don't always love him back. It's a print. James, it's a print. Easily done. To help them battle the beast from the east, they've enlisted the help of this bad boy, a 1966 Ford Mustang, yeah. More used to cruising down the interstate than these Northumbrian bee roads. Look at that. I think we should name him. What would you name a white car? With it being a, a muscle car. Yeah. It screams out strength and power. Yeah. I would think. Tiberius. Tiberius. Oh, that's very strong, isn't it? Oh. Very gladiatorial. Do what, you know what do you think? I call it Mary. <laughs> I think we'll stick with Rue's suggestion, eh? <laughs> Our two happy shoppers are kicking off with £200 a piece and they're already sizing each other up. How are you feeling about a road trip? My traditional role is generally to lose, <laughs> so uh, I don't want to get I don't want to get into sort of any unfamiliar territory where I'm ahead. <laughs> I think that's called kidology. We start this jaunt on the coast in the northeast of England, pop briefly into Scotland, and then back across the border to head down the west side. We'll meander into the Midlands before ending up at a final auction in York. Today, we'll be making for a sale room in Edinburgh, and we begin in the Northumberland village of Ford. Very appropriate for the Mustang, get it? James is going solo for his first shop of this road trip, the old Forge Antiques. What an entrance, Jim Bob. <laughs> Hello. John, very, very kind of you to brave the weather. Very, very bad this year, yes. Very. Have you been trapped at home then? Uh, yes, nearly a week. You're, you're, you're bearing up well. Yes. What, what, what wine supplies? The cellar run right down. Uh, very heavily. So, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> well, it's definitely cosy in here. Right then, time to get stuck in. It's not a huge place, but it's deceptively well packed. What you got there then, James? Breakfast? These are commonly known as meat platters, and you might have had a roast chicken or a leg of lamb or something, and a roast potatoes around there. Pretty ordinary, aren't they? This is more interesting. Japanese aesthetic, lifted up, quite heavy. I can see it's made by Wedgwood & Co. There was an international tariff act that we were a signatory to, and it was decided that country of manufacturer should be stamped on every item. But because it's not stamped England, I know it's pre-1891. You know, quite fun, but it's, it's all a bit yesteryear. If, if I bought this for £35, I would probably uh, make a loss of £30. <laughs> well, that won't do at all, will it? Maybe check out the shed round the back, eh? John, what, what, what's this rather gruesome item you've got here? It says spittoon. Charming. This wouldn't be in a domestic home, would it? 
I don't think so. I mean, I would have thought it might be in a pub or a pub, you know, yeah. an ale yeah. house or something. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I would say very <laughs> much, very much in the public bar, John, wouldn't you? Very much. You would have been. Bar. You wouldn't have been yeah. allowed in the landlord saloon bar with this, would you? I doubt it. Oh. I doubt it. Five phlegm filled pans. Then it's been given a sort of naturalistic look, hasn't it? It's yes. like a little barrel. You see, as an innkeeper. Mm. It is absolutely irresistible to me. Donson Goodware would have had to put up with a lot of abuse, wouldn't it? I think so, yes. John, yeah. I'm going to buy that for right. the princely Thank sum of a so. fiver. Oh, Excellent. Yeah, Lead me to your till. <laughs> so, James is off the mark with that um, delightful item. Let's hope they've washed it. Do you think I'm going to make my fortune? With I, this I don't think you, I, I think you'd do all right on it. I do you think so? so? I don't think there are going to be mer very many of them around. I know, but are they still desirable objects? <laughs> With some polish, no spit though. Thank you very much. Thank you, bye. Bye. And with his spittoon safely stowed, it's time to hit the road, Jack. Now, where's Rude got to? She's headed into Scotland, on the east coast at Eyemouth. She's come down to the town's harbour to visit Gunn's Greenhouse, and to find out about the shady local merchant who had it built. Tony Bolton is the manager of this 18th century house of secrets. Hi, Tony, I'm Ruth. Hi. Lovely Please, to meet you. Pleased to meet you. What would life have been like in the Georgian times in Eyemouth? Eyemouth at that time was a fishing village, but there were quite a few merchants around. Mm -hmm. So John Nisbet came from a merchant family. His brother was a merchant and his father was a merchant. So he used to do quite a lot of importing and exporting mm -hmm. into Eyemouth. Guns Green House was built in the 1750s as a really imposing building and in those days there was nothing else on this side of the harbour so he was really making a statement to say that well I'm rich and affluent in the area I'm Mr Big. Gosh. High taxes on imported goods at the time meant that a black market had emerged. Tea in particular was taxed at an eye-watering 119%. And Nisbet, a legitimate businessman by day, plied a less than honest trade at night as a tea smuggler. John Nisbet was very shrewd. He saw an opportunity to make some money. And he used to buy his tea in Sweden legally and then bring it into, the, into Scotland. And of course he wasn't paying tax on it and therefore it became smuggled goods, contraband, and then selling it out to local people and to, and to the big houses in the borders. But how did Nisbet's tea smuggling tie into this magnificent house? Well, that's why this house is known as the House of Secrets. Come this way now. Oh, I'd love to. Thank you. Guns Green was designed by one of the most renowned architects of the day, John Adam, and was the height of Georgian style. However, it's a matter of debate as to whether the architect was aware of some of the more clandestine features devised to help this illicit trade. This hidden room, built between the floors, allowed the smugglers to remain undetected by the customs men. And the building has another secret. The house was built to hide a tea chute, a giant tea caddy. So this model helps us to see the secrets of the house. Mm -hmm. So if I just lift the floor off there, and as we lift this little bit out, we can see that this is the tea chute. So this is made out of tea chests, like this one here, mm -hmm. lined in lead, so it would keep the tea dry. Yes. This is where we are now. We're at the base of the, of the tea chute on this floor here. Mm -hmm. And if I were to tell you that it's hidden here. This. But if we just slide that open there. That's very clever. Then this bit opens out there. And then here we have the base of the tea chute. That's amazing. This secret tea compartment was filled via a hatch on the third floor and was big enough to store 500 pounds of tea. That's a lot of bags. Nisbet's smuggling operation was prolific and he was often caught, but with some well-placed bribes, he'd soon be back in business. However, his success couldn't last forever. There was another merchant in Eyemouth called Alexander Robertson and he really wanted this house. I mean, this was the house in town. He bought a debt that Nisbet owed to a trader in Sweden. And then he went to Nisbet and said, I want my money. Nisbet couldn't pay. And so Alexander Robertson went to the courts and had him made bankrupt. Robertson bought the house at auction and then John Nisbet had to move out. 
tea running came to an end in 1784 when the government slashed the tea tax to 12.5% and put the smugglers out of business. Nisbet managed to carry on as a trader but never got over the loss of his home, signing letters John Nisbet of Guns Green House right up until his death. Meanwhile, James and trusty steed Tiberius are southward bound, and his mind is on his new rival. I've got to really look to my metal. She's a younger competitor, and uh, she's probably got her fingers closer to the closer to the market than I have. I'm a diamond saw, after all. The beast from the southeast, eh? <laughs> his next port of call is the Northumberland town of Wooler, gateway to the Cheviots and a visit to Borders Architectural Antiques. Bah! Hello, hello, hello. Hello. James. Nice to meet you, James. I'm Good. Gordon. Gordon, what, what, a what a lovely place. This is uh, meat and drink for me. Excellent. Nice architectural items. Whatever I buy will be heavy from here, won't it? Chances are. Yeah, excellent. I like heavy things. In the next life, I shall deal in stamps. <laughs> First class idea. Definitely more manageable than these big lumps you've got in here, Gordon. I'm not talking about James. I have this limited budget, so, you know, it's not going to buy me this lovely architrave here, is it? Obviously. No, I wouldn't even buy you the pediment. His remaining £195 is more of an impediment in here, I'd say. Who writes this stuff? Oh, hello. Is this Lou special? Extremely. Is it? <laughs> it's got an excellent provenance. Really? Oh, yes. It came from Glam's Castle. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and the famous resident of Glam's was? Well, the Queen Mother, of course. The Queen Mother. Have you got a sort of bill, or, or is this just word of mouth that's from Glam's? I got it from the land agent. You got it from the land agent? Who was ordered to clear out some outhouses. OK. And how much is this? This? The Royal Throne. That'll be toilet humour, then. 575. 575. Slightly beyond my budget, unless you are being very, very favourable. But I better, I'll, I'll have a look, I'll have a look round, Gordon. <laughs> Please do. So, while James is otherwise engaged, <laughs> let's catch up with Rue. Now, south of the border, but only just, at Berwick-upon-Tweed, which has changed hands between England and Scotland more than a dozen times over the years. She's arrived at her first emporium. Great leg warmers, by the way, very flash dance. Hi, I'm Ruth. Hello, I'm Anne. Welcome to the auction house. Oh, thank you for having us here. You've got quite an eclectic mix here. We have. It's yeah. really charming. It I can actually spend hours in here. It's lovely. Does she trying on all the clothes? Yeah. <laughs> Better get stuck in then. This is reminding me of a certain Mr. Braxton. My head's a wee bit too big for it. <laughs> I'm saying nothing. You know I'm a complete magpie for glass. I just can't help myself. The minute I see it, I get some juice flowing through my veins and it's so geeky, but I can't help it. Made at 3,400 degrees. But yet, if I drop it, it will smash in one second. A bit of Victorian glass, but um, this is almost antique in two years' time, it will be. Art Deco. It's... um. Quite Egyptian shaped too. It's got those lovely gold bands. This would have been sort of 1920s, 1925. And this comes with six glasses. These are so cute. So cute. You could fill them up with cranberry juice or something far more potent. It's become quite a trendy item. Will it make money auction? It's £36, so it might be worth a punt. She's in her element here. Anything else? Ah. I was just about to step over that, but this is something I've pretty much grown up with my whole life. This is an Asian prayer mat. You cannot stand on them with shoes. It's so disrespectful. You can only be barefoot and completely cleansed before you stand on it. Looking at it, it doesn't look like it's been used much. If this was your family prayer mat and you were standing on it five times a day for four decades, it would actually be bold patches here, really, from where your feet have actually stood in the prayer mat. It's a very sweet, nostalgic thing. It doesn't have a lot of value to it, no antique value. It's quite new and it's not ornate, but it still makes me smile. 
because it's nostalgic and to me it's home. Now, ah, from the sacred to the profane. When we last saw James, he was pondering the porcelain. These are quite fun, aren't they? These are pools for, for, for loo systems, aren't they? That's right. Still potty time, I see. And they're ceramic, so they're pottery. Uh, and this one's rather funny. Directions. That one says pool. This one, you're left to your own devices with this one, aren't you? And then this is the... This is the sort of Rolls Royce, isn't it? Yes, the resistance. But they've got their chains. They're ready to go. I see you've got some fa fancy prices on those, Gordon, eh? What's that? 65, so 30, 30. So that's about, you know, you're north of 100 there, aren't you? Oh, yeah. 125, to be precise. 50 quid, Gordon, come on. <laughs> Cheeky. 75. 75. That, put it that. Thank you very much indeed, Gordon. Do you know, I think he's pulled. <laughs> Check it. Check it, I come from Eastport. Job done, and flush with success, he's off. You're building up quite an unsavoury collection there, James. Back in Berwick, has anything else caught Rue's eye? I'm such a magpie for jewellery, anything that sparkles. And I've really fallen in love with marcasite. Marcasite is actually the stone. It's that lovely, smoky, gunmetal grey colour that almost blends in with the metal itself. But what's even better is it's, it's silver. It's not just costume. Not British Hallmark, which would have been ideal, but it, it's silver and it's very Art Deco style. No stones missing. So this has got a good chance at auction. I think I'm going to speak to Anne about this. Anne? I found something beautiful and shiny and sparkly. The price you've got on this is £30. Now, if it had been obviously Hallmark silver, yes. I would have been yes. dancing all around your shop. But what yes. could you do on this? Yes, we want 25 win. If I could get it for 20 I'd be so happy. And it gives me a good chance. Oh, go on then. Yeah, yeah. 20 but, and yeah. I'm so happy with do that. You? Thank you. Yeah, thank you've got you. me off and running. Good. <laughs> right, £20 paid. Good start. Like a little box food? No, I think I'm going to wear it until I have to part with it. <laughs> Thanks, Anne. Thank you. Or oh, it's stuck on her finger and she can't get it off. Anyone got some soap? Back together on the open road, and once again, our pair's thoughts turn towards grub. I bought you the snacks today. Yep. What are you bringing me tomorrow? The golden rule of any road trip is to eat regionally. I know alienate Scottish viewers now, <laughs> but I have yet to find merit in the square sausage. Probably a good job you're heading south, then. <laughs> Nighty night, you two. Dawn breaks on a glorious Northumberland morning, and our Rue is behind the wheel today, having never driven a left hand drive before. So, brown trousers. You like him being uh, driven by me? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying sitting in the middle of the road. It makes me feel warm and vulnerable. Well, I'd like to give you a better view of the oncoming traffic. <laughs> Lordy. Yesterday, our nervous driver was a bit slow off the starting line, only buying a Marcusite ring. I'm such a magpie for jewellery. So, she still has £180 spending money today, while our nervous passenger managed to get his mitts on a trio of loo pools and a spittoon. Do you think I'm going to make my fortune? Leaving him with £120 in his wallet and a little worried. My purchases have been quite, um, I would say, uh, not top draw. Are you bluffing me or are you genuinely...? No, I'm genuinely. This is a voice of panic. Early days, James, early days. Later, they'll be making their way to an Edinburgh auction, but our first destination of the day is the village of Powburn. <laughs> and having dumped James, Rue's got a bit of a crush on Tiberius. He is glorious. He's strong and I feel very, very safe in his uh, capable wheels. <laughs> the snow is trying to trip me up, but I'm not going to let that happen because I'm on a mission. Oh. Very determined. And she needs to be. She's got a lot to do today, and Hedgley Antique Centre seems a good place to hedge her bets. Hi, Steve. Hello. I'm Rue. Nice to meet you. This is a meaty place. Yep, hopefully so, some treasure for you. I'm actually going to whiz round like a whirling dervish. Yep. And fingers crossed, find something. 
best boot forward then. She's still got £180 in her pocket and there's plenty in here to get stuck into. This is somewhere where you actually need hours, a whole day. Because I'm indecisive. It's my weakness. Oh, you can do it, Rue. You're on a mission, remember? That is lovely. I do have a fondness for display cabinets and that one's pretty regal. It's got lovely inlay on it and I think it's velvet lined, but it's £165. Might fit in the boot of the car, but the price has got to be right. Can you imagine me trying to carry that out of the shop? I know at auction that's going to fly because it's functional and people would happily put their collection of, I don't know, brandy glasses, whiskey glasses, things that you would use. I'm going to have to speak to Steve about that. That's one to keep in mind. That's a good start then. Let's keep the focus, Rue. There's so much I like. I've got to rein it in. Because this is what I do. I just go off in all these different tangents and directions, and then it gets messy. This is a sterling silver propelling pencil. So it just takes you back to being in school, really, where you twist the top and the lead just comes out infinitely. This is quite simple, but it's £19.18, actually. Not exciting, but it might be a nice, safe buy. Looks like she's struck a bit of a silver seam here. This is a, thankfully, British Home Art and Acid Sterling Silver Compact. The reason I like it is that lovely oval design to it. Um, I would say it's probably very early 1900s. And it's a fair weight of silver. And the mirror isn't cracked. Obviously, the powder's gone, but that's good because it lets me see the hallmarks. The price on this, 48 I'm going to put that back and I might go speak to Steve because I've got a few ideas whizzing around in my head now. Ah, the man himself. Steve. Yeah? I have flown around this emporium <laughs> and found a few things I like. OK. Um, a few silver items, but that lovely big display cabinet, that's the first thing that caught my eye. You've got that price up at 165 Yes. I do love it and I'd mm -hmm. be looking at double figures ideally because it's such a big chunk of what I have. Um, one, two, five? Could you mm. do sort of 95? Is there anything else that you're looking at? Maybe yes. we can put a few things together? There, there was also the propelling pencil which was 18 and uh -huh. the silver compact. Those three items have a combined ticket price of £231. If you could do... Wait for it. One... Any second now. 40. <laughs> mm. um, quite a chunk. Um, could you come up to 150? Uh, 145? Yeah, why not? Yeah. I'll meet you in the middle. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm absolutely bamboozled after that. <laughs> How do you think he feels then? That's £32 for the compact, 18 for the pencil and 95 for the cabinet. That's been a very productive morning. You have been an absolute legend, so thank you. You're more than welcome. I'm going to try and get the cabinet now. I'll watch. Wish me luck. <laughs> Now, if there's one thing our James loves more than antiques, it's a good nosh. So, he's made his way to the tiny fishing village of Craster on the North Sea coast to discover the local delicacy that has adorned many a breakfast table, the famous Craster Kipper. He's here to meet Neil Robson, whose family have been smoking kippers here since 1906. And it smells like it. Neil, pleased to meet you, James. Good to meet you. Well, Good to meet welcome you. to Crasner. Is that your smokehouse I can smell? Probably is. There's, <laughs> a, there's a waft of it coming over here. <laughs> what is a kipper? A kipper has a smoked herring and it's been uh, split open, yeah. brined and hung up in the smokehouse. And originally it was to, uh, to preserve them because obviously the people didn't have refrigerators or anything, so it was a way of keeping them edible for longer. But nowadays, of course, it's enhancing the flavour. And this is a family business that's been Yeah, going on. I'm, I'm the fourth generation and um, I've got uh, daughters, hopefully, that's going to come into it eventually as well. Snapping at the heels. Snapping, ready. yeah, definitely, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> That'd be great. Well, will you take me to your smokehouse? Yes, certainly, yeah. Thank yeah. you. The smokehouse was built in 1856, at a time when most places along this coast had one. The herring fleet would leave Scotland in the spring and pursue the shoals of fish down the east coast until the autumn, landing their catches at villages like Craster along the way. 
the fleet was followed by the Herring Girls, travelling from port to port, filleting and salting the fish as they went. In fact, one explanation for the name Kipper comes from kip houses where the girls would sleep. Would you like yeah, I'd love it. Come on. I'll so, should we take a couple of these? Oh, nice and chilly, aren't they? This is like the generation game. How, <laughs> how many have I got to do now? I'll just stand well back. <laughs> so, take it all the way down to all the end. Down, yeah. And then all the way up here. And then open it up. Yeah. And so, that's what would be hung up, would that it? That would be hung up, yeah. I'm not quite fully qualified herring girl yet. No, am not I? quite. Seven out of ten for that one. Oh, I'm happy with that. Yeah. I'm happy with that. Nowadays, the splitting is done by machine, and it's the only part of the factory that has been automated. The rest of the process, from soaking in brine, putting the fish on tenter hooks, and then hanging them up in the smokehouse, has remained the same for over 100 years. It's a labour-intensive job, but they still manage to smoke seven to 8,000 kippers a day. Wow. Wow. Come in, James. Goodness. So that, oh, it's all above. Isn't that incredible? What's this all on the wall here? Well, that's just the smoke that's caused the tar, plus the oil out the kippers as well. God, that's amazing. And layers and layers. And is this generations of tar on the walls? Well, we have cleaned it off in the past, or attempted to. <laughs> uh, it smells of a rather smart bonfire, doesn't it? It's a very, <laughs> very, very posh bonfire, yeah. <laughs> And it does remind me of a sort of a dark satanic limestone cave. Stalagmites and stalactites. Well, these are the fires that we like. It's white wood shavings yep. with oak sawdust over the top. Yeah. And uh, it takes about four lots of fires. Each fire lasts about three hours, so it takes about 12, 14 hours before the actual kippers are, are ready. This smokehouse runs presumably 24 hours a day. Yeah, as soon as it's empty, it's filled up again, yeah. yeah. With the kippers in such high demand, we should let them light those fires and get smoking. <laughs> Time to sample the good son, and Mr Braxton has invited a friend along. A couple of kippers and a glass of cider. James. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have asked me to come to the edge of a cliff to join you for lunch. I know. What it's have you no, got for me? I no ordinary lunch. That's a kipper bat. I've never had kippers before. You've never had kippers before? Never. The key to a long and healthy life, kippers. Mmm. They're quite fishy, aren't they? Mmm. The bones, they're bones. <laughs> Come on, we've got antiques to buy. I think I'm happy to park my lunch. And, and who's driving? Buy. Who's driving? I'm driving. You're driving. You might want to crack open the windows in the car, mind you. Oh, look, roof down, even better. <laughs> no bad breath. They're heading to Annick, County Town, and the seat of the Dukes of Northumberland. That's their castle, and that's their surprised lion. But we're here to visit the V&A, vintage and antique, <laughs> not the other one. You excited? Very excited. Okay. Looking forward to this. Well, yeah, well, Looks yeah, lovely. Well, yeah. Thank you. Gosh, loving the hat, Rude. James has a fair bit to do in here with only two buys under his belt so far. He's still got £120 to play with, though. Careful, James! Oh, right. Lordy. It's all there, isn't it? Oh, dear. Rue has the opposite problem. She's bought four items already, but she's got just £35 in case she fancies something else. This catches my eye. It's a travelling dentist case. It's not glamorous but they are very, very collectible. Five drawers and the best part, inside got all of the tools that they used, implements, teeth guides, things that would strike fear into the heart of every single one of us. The price on this is 76 pound. I've got less than half of that. I can't buy it. It's not gonna be mine. I've gotta find something because time is a ticking. She's not wrong there. I like this. It's got a great shape. It's Art Deco in style. So we've left all the frilliness of the 19th century, and now we're in the time of the, of the train, of the aeroplane, of the motor car. So machine decoration on the, quite a plain dial here. And then we've got these Arabic instead of Roman numerals, very modern. Let's turn it around. Quite a cheap movement. So you just wind up the spring there. Turning it the wrong way. Oops. Rather nice item. What have we got on it? £64. I don't see what the best price is. 
Bram, what, what, what could be the best on that? I would think probably the best on that would be 50. 50. Is that any good to you? Yeah, I think it is. I think, I think I'm in with a fighting chance with that. If you hold on to that, okay. don't let Rue see it. Right, I'll hide it. Shrewd move, Brackers. What's he spotted now? Cool. Boom, boom, eh? So this is a, a Mills bomb, uh, and they were used in the First and Second World War. And um, I'm not a great military man, but uh, it's a very iconic uh, sort of piece that represents that period of time. This one, fortunately, is deactivated. And the Braxton test of weight, this certainly fulfills it. It comes to hand worryingly well. Don't look now, James, but I think it could be live. What are you doing with a hand grenade? You can relax. Oh! <laughs> 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 this is how you eliminate the competition. That, that's how I eliminate the competition. Yeah, no. you are. If you quite finished putting the wind up your arrival, let's have a chat with Brian about it. Brian? Have you sold many of these? Not too many. Um, you don't come upon them that often, but um, oh, good, good. good paperweight. A good paperweight, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what they used to call a conversation piece, didn't they? Yes. Yeah. This was for practice use, wasn't it? That's a drill one, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Incredible sort of curio. I know it represents yeah. sort of death and destruction, but, mm -hmm. uh, an, uh, you know, an, an, an interesting thing. object you yeah. don't often see. Anyway, you got 49. What, could you do, uh, do me a deal? If that was an auction, it would probably go for around about 30 to 50 quid. So what about 30 quid? 30 quid, I'll shake your hand. OK. Thank you very much indeed, Brian. That's a great pleasure. pie. Thank you. Well, let's hope it doesn't just bomb, eh? <laughs> Rue, meanwhile, having recovered her composure, seems to be thinking along similar lines. Basra, 1921, and it's very, very weighty. The thing is, you wouldn't expect me to like trench art. You'd think I'd go for anything shiny and sparkly, but I've got a real meaty masculine side, and I love trench art. It's got a Middle Eastern scene on it. Obviously, the soldier was in Basra, the couple embracing, it's got a little romantic scene, so maybe the soldier was missing his, his girlfriend or his wife. This is priced at 42, but uh, I want to beef it up a little bit. This little small one is 1916, World War I, Cali. I could see this on, well, my desk, and I'd put my, uh, my fancy um, pens in there. Put together with the other one, that comes to 50 pound. You'd better speak to Dita Helen then. See if she's in a generous mood. I found two pieces of trench art. This large one here at the back, that's priced at 42, 42. And this little baby one that's priced at eight. So I'm going to confess to you. You haven't got very much money. I have 35 pound on the nose. Would it be possible to have both for 35 pound? Let me just see what's on the ticket. Ooh. Yes, I think that would yeah? be fine. Yes, you sure? yes. Thank you, Helen. OK. Ooh. That's Thank a deal you. then. So that's Rue completely cleaned out. I guess her shopping is done. James is still on the hunt though. He's got that clock under consideration and he's bought a grenade. So what else? I like this. Oh, first thing I like about it is the weight. It's got a very good weight. It's made of obviously made of brass. It's a model of a field cannon. What's with all the weaponry today? It's got uh, the big wheels there a turned uh, cannon here. The only slightly disappointing thing is the carriage could be slightly more splendid. That would look great on somebody's desk. If that was polished up again, it's, 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 it's well in proportion, it's solidly built, and 27 pounds doesn't seem a lot for an item of quality. Quite, let's chat to your man Brian again then. Ah, I think I found another item. Right. Could that be cheap? I can uh, put it down to 20 pounds if you... 20. You're talking my language. Oh, well, there you go, right. so... Don't forget the clock. So we've got 50 15, and 20. 20. 70 pounds. 70 pounds, put it there. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. God bless you, God bless <laughs> Annick. He seems quite pleased with that deal. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, bye. Been a pleasure. Certainly has. Right, you two, next stop, auction. Do you think we're going to have good fortune? I think so. They're well-to-do people up in Edinburgh. We'll do well. Well, they're well-to-do people, but we're hungry people. Are you going to provide the snacks? It's like a broken record, isn't it? Time for a kit, then, and get some shut-eye.
Ah, Scotia's darling seat. Our adventurous antiqueurs have arrived in Edinburgh. More specifically, Leith. Look, sunshine, rarity. I think I should have bought some popcorn so we can watch the drama unfold. Drama. And watch me beat you. <laughs> Don't count your chickens. After starting out at Ford in Northumberland, we've headed to Scotland's capital, here to sell at Ramsey Cornish Auctioneers. James spent £180 on his five auction lots, while Rue burned through her whole budget on her five lots. So, what do you make of each other's buys, chaps and chap heads? This peer cabinet would have stood between windows. Burr walnut marquetry, it's got gilt metal mounts, all that for £95, I think Rue could do well. I was really quite envious when I saw this. I thought, that is brilliant, so collectible, very cool thing. And he only paid £30 for it. Out of all of James's items, I covet this the most. Our man with the gavel today is Martin Cornish. What does he make of their efforts? The spittoon. Personally, it's not the sort of thing I would maybe want to have at home. It might not be easy necessarily to find a buyer for it, but I'm sure we'll sell it. The trench art brass shell cases are really unusual, one of them particularly because of where it comes from. Um, they're always popular. It all sounds very promising. Let's get stuck in there. This will pet me up. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. They never stop eating these two, do they? Must have a worm. Mm. First up, James's spittoon. Do we expect to rate it? <laughs> you rarely see them now. When was the last there time? There might be a reason for that, James. There yeah. might be. <laughs> yeah. Unusual item. Don't often see them these days. You see? Yes. 20 for the spittoon, 20 I'm bid. 20 pounds I'm bid for the spittoon. At 20 pounds I'm bid. For the lot, 22, 24, <gasps> 26, 28, 30. At 30 pounds. At 30... £30. £30. £30. That's all right, isn't it? That's brilliant. First blood to James. It'll look nice in someone's boudoir. Think of the ugly pieces. They need a home too, don't they? They do. They do. Let's see if Rue's silver pencil will be a draw. I think you're somewhere between 10 and 20 pounds. That's what mm. I think. Next, I may be wrong. Let's start at 20 then. 20 and 20, oh, 24, oh, 26, 28, oh, wrong man. Five, I'm not 40, getting excited. I'm not getting pounds. too excited. The little propelling pencil at 40 pounds. A little bit more. Marco, little nobody bit more. else now at 40 and I'm selling it. <laughs> Take it back. That's a good start for Rue too. Goes to show that hopefully there is a silver buying audience here. Time now for James's Art Deco timepiece. <laughs> wound it up this morning, so set the time. Listen to right. the <laughs> at 12 pounds. <laughs> 20 and bid, 25. 30, 5, 40. At 40 pounds. The sweet little clock. At 40 pounds. At 40, 83. Thank nice you. Nice profit there, nice profit. Is it? Is there a profit? I've forgotten Next how much I paid for it. It's definitely not a profit. <laughs> Sorry, James. We'll go to a home where it's loved. That's all that matters. <laughs> no, it isn't. It's the profit. It's the profit that matters. <laughs> Rue's second bit of silver now. Will it reflect a profit? Do you know, I know a lot of ladies now who are going back to good old-fashioned compacts. Really? And yeah, because checking your reflection in a mobile phone isn't classy. £30, 35 £40, 5 50 At £50. Well, in the back, at £50. And I'm going to sell it at 50 Last call. £50, well. She'll be made up with that. It wasn't the most exciting compact, but it's made a profit and it's pretty. Just like these. The toilet pulls are up next. Could it be a loss or a profit? Yes. And I can start the bidding at £30 on commission. Ooh. 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 5, 70. Oh, you've done it. 5. At 75. Ladies standing 75. at 75. Well done, and I'm going to lady. sell them. Thank you. 191. <laughs> Well, it washed its face. Now wash your hands. So you're relieved. I'm relieved. Semi relieved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunate choice of words there. Okay, Rue's trench art now. The auctioneer was a fan. I went a wee bit military here. I do love my trench art. 20 for them. 20 bit. 25, 30, 5, 40, 5, 50. At 50 pounds. Wow. 50, well 33. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank Very you. Good. Yes, that's another good result for our girl. Oh, it was, it was 14, a nice, big romantic 16, scene. Okay, don't go on. <laughs> <laughs> the model cannon next. 
Would it go with a bang? Do you think it'll go above fifty pounds, my dear? <laughs> I'm gonna go for how much? Thirty-four. Yes. Thirty-four. Thirty-four. Twenty pounds. I bid for this. Twenty-five. Thirty. At thirty pounds for the cannon. At thirty pounds. Nobody else going on. At thirty on commission with me. At thirty then. With me no. at thirty. Oh. It's profit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cheer up, James. It's pointing in the right direction. I think the old adage is you're, you're never more going to make a huge profit unless you're Rue Irvin. Well, let's see if that holds true for her Marcus Eat ring. I think when I bought this ring, I bought it for myself. I love it. 20 and bit. 20 pounds and bit. 22, 24. There was too much of a pause there. 30. At 30 pounds. Lady seated now. At 30. And I'm selling it at 30. Well done. Profit. You've got a profit on everything. She has indeed. Well done, Rue. What to learn. The day's not done. Let's see what happens when we lob James's last lot into the room. Yeah, it's it's, li it's almost living. Yeah. The way that spring, the clip, I, I pulled the pin and the clip just flies off. 30 for it. 30 and this. 35, 40, 5, 50, 5, 60. At 60 pounds. Over in the doorway at sixty pounds for the lot. Very, very good. Nobody else? Are you sure? At, at sixty, and I'm selling it for seven nine. Double that's your money. Uh, double that's money. Brilliant. Well, that's better, isn't that's it? That's a very good result, old bean. Positively explosive. That was my favourite buy of yours. Finally, Rue's cabinet. It's her big ticket item. Could lose all that profit. It could just come out my pocket. Pockets like a sieve. Twenty. I see. Mm. Fifty to start it. 50 and bid. 50 pounds and bid for this. 55, 60, 5, 70, 5, 80, 5, 90, 5, 110. At 110. Nobody else. At 110, and I'm selling it. Well done, well done, well done. Excellent. That's five out of five, then. Good job. <laughs> well, the next leg, I'm buying five, silver. I oh, know you can't copy five, me now. Does that mean I'll yeah. be buying hand grenades? <laughs> <laughs> if, you can, if you can find them. Let's hit the road, Jack. Yes, off you pop, while we work out how well you did. A bespectacled James set off for £200. After all auction costs, he made a profit. Next time, gentlemen, Jim will have £212.70 to spend. It's a start. Rue started with the same amount. However, she's had a little more success as, after deducting silver and fees, she has £229.60p to spend on the next leg. Look a bit happier about it. James, you got any snacks for me in the glass? I think box? I need some. The nerves have eroded my waistline. Well, what should we have, then? Steak pie. <sighs> with all the trimmings. Dumplings. Oh, yes, yes.